सो आर पेपर इज एफ थ्री फाइनेंशियल स्ट्रेटेजी दिस पेपर इज बेसिकली अबाउट द फाइनेंस ऑफ द कंपनी हाउ टू मैनेज फाइनेंस ऑफ द कंपनी इट्स अबाउट हाउ टू मैनेज रिस्क रिस्क इन टर्म्स ऑफ लाइक करेंसी एंड इंटरेस्ट एंड वी हैव अ सेपरेट पेपर कॉल पी थ्री विच इज रिस्क मैनेजमेंट राइट एंड अ मेजर पोर्शन ऑफ आर सिलेबस इज टू वैल्यू अ बिजनेस and merger and acquisitions this is the most examinable topic the weightage is the higher one okay now as far as the syllabus uh, weightage is concerned so let me show you the syllabus weightage and this is the weightage of the syllabus so you can see here there are four sections and as per the weightage the heavy section is business valuation where we cover mainly mergers and acquisitions how to value a company how the uh, post merger issues we have to deal with theoretically and uh, how to value a uh, post mergers valuation the impact on stakeholders the impact on shareholders and all other stuffs related to merger and acquisition so this is basically 40% of the syllabus the second thing is that the financial risk i already told you that this 20% covers the currency as well as interest that if we are expecting an appreciation of currency or a depreciation of currency what to do how to manage so we'll talk about the management that is the hedging hedging means to minimize the risk how to minimize the risk for a company if that company is expecting either the appreciation of currency or the depreciation of the currency third one which is finance and we have a discussion of only long term finance not short term finance short term finance is not part of this syllabus so this is excluded because already student have knowledge of short term financing from their previous paper that is f1 financial operation that's why it's not given and and some introduction of long term financing is already being studied by the student in paper f2 that is financial management so semi student have an idea of how to, how uh, the long term finance works what is cost of capital but we will start from the scratch assuming that you are coming from the exemption route so yeah, you haven't studied f2 right so this is basically 25% of the syllabus the second highest and it covers about uh, the equity financing the debt financing the cost of capital the capital structure so and so on the dividend policy so it's about financing and the first one which is 15% it covers the issue like the for profit organizations objective not for profit organization objectives the strategy the ratios all together not that much important from the examination point of view so focus should be on business valuation and mergers then long term financing then financial risk and then financial policy decisions right now as far as the paper pattern is concerned paper structure is concerned so we have 60 otqs and you know because you have already attempted that paper so you know what otq means 
that uh, it is not like MCQs. So multiple choice question might be one or two or uh, the deadly question is uh, select all that apply, especially the theoretical question, because you have to correct all, otherwise you will not able to get the marks. And the time duration, again, it's a tough one that you have to attempt these 60 OTQs in only 90 minutes. So stuff in the sense that you have to be quick and you have to adopt a strategy that if you know you can't answer one question, just skip that question and invest your time on those which you can perform well so that you can save time for those questions which are looking to be difficult, but at, at, at any cost, you have to attempt all these questions, correct? So this makes this paper very difficult in terms of timing because you have to quickly attempt your question and then suddenly you do some mistakes in theoretical question. That's why the students are not able to get good marks. Passing marks are, you have to score from 150, right? And you have to score 100 out of 150. That is roughly around, Sema says that it's 70% marks. It's roughly around 67 something. Now, as far as the resources are concerned, the resource that you have to use is the official partner that is Kaplan Study Text. You can either use Kaplan or BPP, whatever you want to, or if you have time, you can use both. But my preference is Kaplan study text and the revision kit, the question bank, Kaplan and BPP both question bank, the maximum question bank you have to attempt so that you can get an idea that how questions are there. And uh, I will share some technical articles specific to some spe specific topics, not related to SEMA, but other qualifications like ACC and other qualifications, just to improve your theory. And then you, ha you have to study those. If you study those articles, it will improve your knowledge about the theoretical stuff. We can also use the other qualifications MCQs if you have time. Questions, right? If you have time, you can use SEMA F3 old papers, but that paper pattern was different. So you can try a few long questions just to have a good understanding of the syllabus. So uh, these are the things, the paper pattern, the syllabus. Now we can assume that the breakup of the 60 OTQs, we can only assume it is not that fixed that 40% of the OTQs will be from business valuation and mergers. We can only assume it's not fixed means majority of the question that is how much 24 questions at least or around 24 question from business valuation. Likewise, 25% from sources of finance. So we can anticipate that 15 question will be from finance section and accordingly 20% from risk. So we can say that 12 question from risk, but this is only anticipation. This is not a fixed one. It might vary. Okay. But you should focus on theoretical aspect as well as the numerical aspect. So my first area that I'm going to discuss start from section B that is long-term finance. So let's intro have an intro of long-term finance today, and then we will continue this in the next class. Now let's talk about that uh, 
right now we have a public listed company a quoted company a company that is listed in an stock exchange and you are a finance manager of that a company and company needs funds for a project and the life of the project is 10 years so it means that the ideal thing is to choose a source of fund having the same life that is 10 years or more than like more than one year at least long term source of finance rather than short term source of finance so from where you will arrange this finance so a public listed company will raise this finance from capital market capital market is a type of financial market this is one type of financial market where we deal in long term finance and you know there are two parties involved that one who is called provider of finance and that provider of finance is investor in every market there are investors as well as the companies that are raising funds or the user of finance and who are using those that finance companies they need funds in order to run their projects right so if a company is a public listed company and if that company is already listed on the stock exchange and now company needs further funds so what options are available in terms of long term finance so the options are company can raise equity financing company can raise preference shares or company can raise debt financing these are possible options we have further options but this is generally the main options available that can util be utilized by the public listed company remember that for a private company for a startup for a small and medium companies there are other options available so a public listed company can use ordinary shares as a way of finance preference shares or debt financing that you can also call that as bonds or bank loan these are the certificates you can directly take money from a bank in the form of debt financing so what is the difference between shares and debt loan and what is the difference between equity financing ordinary shares and preference shares what is the difference between shares and debt so we know that when we issue shares we have to pay what we have to give dividend to our shareholder right and when we use debt financing we have to pay interest to our loan providers and what is the difference between these two as far as loan is concerned the interest is compulsory you have to pay interest at any cost whether you have profit available cash flows available interest is compulsory but as far as dividend is concerned it is not compulsory the directors can choose how much to pay it is the directors decision who decide about dividend the directors directors decide about how much to pay to shareholders so one question i have if 
a company is not paying dividend to shareholders what would be the impact on shareholders what would be the impact on share price will there be any effect on share price or there will be no effect on share price what's your idea just chat write in the chat box what's your idea do you think that uh, non dividend payment results in the dilution of share price will be a fall in share price the answer is yes most of the time if a company is not paying dividend it will affect the share price it will affect the shareholders yes but most of the time not all the time and that we will study in a discussion which is called dividend policy that what is the significance of paying dividend what is the significance of dividend policy for a company remember that what shareholders want shareholders want directors to provide them maximum benefit that is wealth maximization what shareholders want shareholders want the wealth to be maximized and how shareholders get wealth wealth or return we can also say shareholders want their return to be maximized how they get their return from the company so there are two components of return one is they get dividend and other is increase in share price what is called increase in share price the increase in share price is called capital gain so shareholders want dividend as well as they want that the company will increase or the management will make efforts to increase their share price but remember that in the stock market if there are capital gains sometimes there are capital losses as well and most of the time there are stock market crash so the investor have lots of losses from the stock market it means that the return of shareholder is not certain the return is not guaranteed they might get good return in a particular year they might not be able to get good return in another year this make it a risky investment this make it a risky investment means shareholders invest in a risky venture in a risk situation who takes most of the risk the higher risk taken by any investor is called shareholder the ordinary shareholder and remember the rule higher the risk higher the rate of return so it means that if a shareholder is investing in a company he is expecting higher risk higher return against the risk in the company so it is a company's responsibility to at least achieve the expected rate of return either in the form of dividend payment or make it like that uh, do something that the company's share price will increase and the shareholder will get capital gain so in order to maximize the wealth of shareholders but as i as i told you that sometimes the company is not paying dividend or sometimes the performance in the stock market is very poor so shareholder is suffering capital losses and sometimes non dividend payment so that's why there is an impact on the share price and it results in fall in the share price so this is just an idea that if you are raising finance so one option is you can get money from your existing shareholder in the form of ordinary shares or from your preference shareholders or if you are not interested you can get the borrowings or the debt financing in the form of bonds or in the form of bank loan right now the company usually raise finance as a mix of finance rather than 
relying on a single source of finance right means for example so whenever company is trying to raise finance the company will choose a mix and that mix might be that how much equity versus how much debt so the company will plan it accordingly like uh, you can get 60% equity and 40% debt you might have 40% equity 60% debt this decision is called your capital structure decision and that is very important that you will choose your mix in such a way that it will maximize the wealth of shareholders we'll discuss how how a capital structure will be decided in such a way that will maximize the wealth of shareholder and this is the duty of a finance manager the cfo the ultimate responsible person for finance to get the finance in such a way that will maximize the wealth of shareholders